Good morning. Welcome to Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church of Deerfield Beach, Florida, where following Jesus, we invite, equip, and serve our neighbor and one another. It's good to have you with us, whether you're here in person or joining us online. We apologize for the delay, some technical difficulties, which have been cleared up. So a reminder that the worship bulletin is available online for, for those of you who are at home and also for those of you here, obviously, to follow the, the screens. And now I invite you as you're able to join us standing as you're able for the Thanksgiving for Baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and placed us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you washed us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy all who thirst, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. sat down under a solitary roof tree. He asked that he might die. Is it enough? Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of hot water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came up, came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to read this psalm responsibly, Psalm. 34 verses 1 through 2. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord, Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord, who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look up, look upon the Lord, and be radiant. And let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. A reading from F.C. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down upon your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the redeemed. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath, and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another. Tender hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, the imitate, imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave, up, gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God, the Lord of Thanks be to God. Let us stand for able for the gospel acclamation. <laughs> Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. May your word be my word, and may the thoughts and meditation of our minds and hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The first reading that Leo read for us of First Kings plops us down right in the middle of the story. Elijah is asking God to let him die. And unless we have read and heard the story before or read an introductory passage, we don't know why he's doing that. He's exhausted. 
We are introduced to him in chapter 17, while we are introduced to King Ahab in the end of the previous chapter. Because this story is about Ahab and Elijah and Ahab's wife. Ahab, who becomes king of the northern kingdom of Israel, is described as having done more evil in the sight of the Lord than all who were before him. That's not a great distinction to have. He married Jezebel, and he went and worshipped and served the god, with little g, Baal. He worshipped Baal, and to make matters worse, Ahab built a house for Baal in the new capital city of Israel, which was Samaria. Not only that, but he also made, erected a sacred pole to the goddess Asherah. First King says again that, quote, Ahab did more to provoke the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, than had all the kings of Israel who were before him, unquote. And so the Lord sent Elijah as his prophet, as as God's spokesperson to Ahab and sent Elijah with a difficult message. There would be no rain, not even dew, in the next years except by God's word. And this was to show Ahab who had so blatantly snubbed the Lord God that there was one real God. Now, that's a tough position to come to, to, to be sent to a king out of relatively nowhere to have this kind of message. And so obviously with that message came a lot of threat. So the Lord God looked out for Elijah. He told him where to hide after delivering that message. And not only was the prophet kept safe, but the Lord saw to it that the prophet was fed, something that God continued to do for him as we read through these chapters. The Lord also provided for those to whom Elijah was sent, even healing and restoring to life a widow's son. Meanwhile, the drought continued into its third year. And in that process, it's hard to know, but I'm guessing Jezebel thought, this is the Lord God's doing because that's what Elijah had said to Ahab. So she was killing off the prophets, prophets of the Lord. Elijah was sent back into that environment to confront Ahab, who had been hunting for him. He comes right into the throne room. Elijah comes to him and says, there is going to be a contest to see who is the one true God. Ahab was to have all of Israel assemble at Mount Carmel. The entire nation was to come to Mount Carmel along with 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah, all who, as it was said, eat at Jezebel's table. In other words, all who were funded and fed by her. To all the people, Elijah said, how long will you go limping along with two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is whom you choose as God, then follow him. But choose. It was one prophet, Elijah, against 850 false prophets, each putting their God to the test. And it makes for a powerful, dynamic story of God. It's well worth reading in chapter 18. I'm not going to cover all, all the details of it. But I encourage you to read it. And spoiler alert, God wins. God wins. Elijah told the people after God won and God proved that this Baal and Asherah were nothing but dead, false, artificial idols. Elijah told the people to seize those false prophets, those 850 false prophets, chase them down, seize them, and slaughter every last one of them. And then God ended the drought, and the rains came. The end. 
Not really. Ahab told his queen Jezebel everything, including how every last one of her prophets of her gods, Baal and Asherah, had been killed. And Jezebel then sent word to Elijah that she would be sure to have him killed by the next day. Elijah fled the country, escaping into neighboring Judah, bringing us up to today's reading. Between having those contests, between having to stand and confront the king, and then having a death warrant on his head, and running to escape, crossing the border to relative safety, Elijah's exhausted. He had walked up to the powerful, and by the Lord's command, he had held them accountable. It took incredible courage, and even more incredible loyalty and commitment to the Lord God. And God had demonstrated that the Lord would not look out for him. What we see here, and in all the stories of who God calls and who are faithful to that calling, including Jesus, his disciples, and those who carry on his mission, is that we are called to challenge the status quo. We are to challenge that it's just the way things are, especially when that status quo leads people away from trusting and serving God. God's desire and calling means we are sent well beyond our comfort zones, risking everything of this life that we think keeps us safe. And at times it can become too much. And that's what happened to Elijah. He had done incredible things. He had risked his life. And he was finding himself being hunted down once again with a warrant out for his death. He is exhausted, but his faith in God isn't. He simply asks God, take my life. Instead of the Lord God giving him what he wants, he is given what he needs. Rest. A rest. Nourishment. So many people are in need of that. People who seek to do the right thing. People who challenge those in authority who seem to be going so far off track. People who are willing to confront the bureaucracy and the red tape and the nonsense and the putting off and the patronizing. Because the Lord God calls them into those spaces. People seek to continue to do what's right while COVID keeps mutating. Just when we think it's been tamed, there's a more contagious variant. People's livelihoods are in danger or they're lost. The same for many in terms of shelter. And for those who are landlords, whose own income is dwindling. Parents are caught trying to provide for their families, sometimes multiple generations, while also at the same time being teachers and everything else. Wildfires, floods, an active season, they say this year, of tropical storms and hurricanes. Advances and setbacks while seeking to do God's will. It's no wonder that people are exhausted, that their patience has worn thin. We don't have death threats, but this stuff can be killing us physically and mentally and emotionally and even spiritually. But God is here with you. God goes with you. The Lord Jesus invites you to regain your breath, to come to this table, to taste and see and be filled and joined to the body and blood of Jesus the Christ, the body and blood that is given and shed for you, the living bread that came down from heaven to bring life, eternal life, for you. This too, is not the end of the story for Elijah or for us. There is more to do. 
There is more to which we are called by God. Elijah is told, get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. And the same can be said for us, get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. So Elijah got up and ate and drank twice. And then he went in the strength of that food. Let us do the same. And to that may all God's people say, Amen. Please stand as you're able for the hymn of the day. Carol, 
Billy, Maggie, Adriana, Jan, Lisa, Laura, Melissa, Jennifer, Chris, all those seeking spiritual truth and looking for God in their lives, those not already named who are hospitalized, recovering from surgery or illness, or dealing with ongoing health issues, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, and those we now name either aloud or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this assembly gathered around your table, virtually and in person, we pray. For those among us who prepare the vessels for our communion celebration, for those who bring the food from this table to those who are homebound or hospitalized, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our sister congregations of Gloria Day of Holmes Beach and Living Lord Lutheran of Lakewood Ranch, guide us in ways we can learn from one another and together serve you. Lord, in your mercy, we lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Practicing safe environment, let us greet one another with peace. <laughs> You may be seated. We come to the time where we consider what God has offered to us, especially through His Son, Jesus Christ, and what He invites us to offer to others. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care, and prepare us now, as we hear this music, to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Son, 
so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this meal and make us one in this community of faith and with your people throughout the world. Glory and praise to you, O God, author of life, word made flesh, power of the Most High, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
There's a connect card in your pew. It's also online. It's a good way for us to be in touch with you and you being in touch with us. So if there, if you haven't introduced yourself to us before via that card, we invite you to put your name and phone number and email, all those kind of things on there. If you have questions or comments or prayer requests or, or maybe even an offer of help in some area that you're interested in, please feel free to put that on there also. And you can complete it by hand or you can leave it in the offering plate. You can use the QR code on the card to complete it online. Those of you watching online can go to zion-lutheran.org slash visitor and find it there. We invite you to come back and join us for worship next Sunday at 11, whether it's online or in person. Again, part of our mission is to invite, and so we encourage you to invite others to join you one way or another, and it's a great source of topic later for conversation as well. AA is continuing to meet. Uh, women are meeting Mondays at 7. Uh, the Old Timers group is meeting Saturdays at 7. Both of them are meeting in the Katie Luther Chapel. You don't have to be an old timer. But I believe for the Monday women's group, you have to be a woman. So there's that restriction. So uh, just to let you know. Our uh, book of Acts, one day, one chapter, is continuing. I encourage you to look at that on, on Facebook Live. Uh, check to see what's on there. There's, there's a question for each chapter. We ask that you join us. If you didn't get a bookmark before for Acts, please see Gail Schmidt after worship. She has some left that, that have some good reminders that celebrate the study of Acts. The group for uh, grief, from grief to wholeness, will be meeting for its monthly meeting this Thursday from 515 to 630 in Katie Luther Chapel. It's going to be meeting in person and on Zoom. We're working on getting uh, a more effective mic. It's a little hard to hear at this point, but we're in the process of getting it so that the sound is going to be improved. Our back to school blessing is Sunday, August 15th at worship. We'll be blessing all students, teachers, staff. If you have a backpack, bring it. If there's other things you want blessed, bring that in regards to your learning. It doesn't matter whether you're in preschool, high school, college, continuing your education, whatever it is. We'd like to have blessings. And then again, it's a great opportunity to invite other people to be blessed as well. There's going to be a Sunday, Sunday following that. And that will be in Katie Luther Chapel. And so a good opportunity to not only have fellowship, but also have some good ice cream. So I invite you to join us on that part. We have a men's retreat coming up in September. And there's more information. It's a, it's a conference men's retreat and so we invite you to look at that and consider whether that's something that that can help you grow your faith 
and find ways to serve. So there's more information on the table out in the narthex, not the front welcome table, but the other one. So please, please check that out. Every year, the ELCA has God's work, our hands. And this year, our effort for God's work, our hands is a community health and wellness fair. It's gonna be Saturday, September 11th. We're also going to be at that time observing that, that time of September 11th, remembering those who lost their lives, and those who gave their lives to help save others and to help work through the, the wreckage to find others. So we will be doing that. Uh, it's co-hosted by Zion and Deerfield Beach Community Cares. We truly need your help with this. So please, uh, many, many hands. Uh, God's work, we should say God's work, many hands for this. Uh, so if you're able to help, ask that you contact Kurt Schmidt uh, and he'll relay it to the, the people who need to know. Uh, altar flowers can continue to be given to the glory of God in memory of someone, in honor of someone, uh, in celebration. So if you're interested in that, again, contact Kurt. We continue to collect offerings to help those who were victims of the Surfside collapse of those condos. There's envelopes in the offering plates or you can give directly online. Special thanks to our readers and greeters for this month. It's always good to have other voices lifting up the Word of God. Our life verse for this week comes from our Psalm, Psalm 34, verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. And that life verse is meant to be something that you can ponder, that you can carry with you throughout the week. Because of the, the rise in COVID cases and because of uh, the Delta variant and all of that, we are encouraging people to wear their masks once again. It's not, not required, but we, we strongly encourage you to be wearing your masks. And thank you for those of you who are and observing the protocols so that we keep everybody safe. Thank you also for your generosity to the ministry that we share together. Whether you're giving online, whether you're giving in the offering plates, you're touching many lives and we continue to reach many people who can't make it to this sanctuary, who still wanna worship, who still wanna worship God, who still want to feel connected to a larger community of faith, who still wanna learn and grow in the word of God. So you help make that possible. And now invite you as you are able to stand, and join us for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.